All right, let's get right into it. Your assigned problems may or may not have different randomized values. For best results, attempt the assignment on your own before watching these solutions. Students are encouraged to frequently pause the video to work out steps on their own before proceeding with the solutions. And here is the list of topics to be covered in this video. First up, let's consider the equation y equals 4 times the sine of 8 times the quantity x plus 5 plus 7. We want to know what the amplitude, period, horizontal shift, and midline or median of this function are. So if you have a function of the form a times the sine of omega times the quantity x minus phi plus c, where omega is presumed to be positive, the absolute value of a is the amplitude, c is the median or midline of the function, 2 pi over omega is the period, and phi is the horizontal shift to the right, presuming you have an x minus phi there. If this was a cosine instead of the sine, it would be exactly the same. Also, in many sources, it's written as omega x minus phi, which is slightly different than the form that I have at the top here. If you have it in this form, notice the horizontal shift would be phi over omega. If you were to factor omega out of the quantity inside the sine function, you would have omega times the quantity x minus phi of omega. So looking at our function, the amplitude is 4, the absolute value of the coefficient of the sine function. The period is 2 pi over 8, which is pi over 4. The horizontal shift is 5 units left, because the way it is written in the box to the right, x minus phi represents a shift of phi to the right. So since we have x plus 5, that's 5 units left. And the median is y equals 7. Problem 2, consider the equation y equals 7 times the sine of the quantity 6x minus 24 plus 8. The first thing I'm going to do is inside the sine function, factor a 6 out so that we have 6 times x minus 4, in which case the amplitude is the absolute value of the coefficient of the sine function, that's 7. The period is 2 pi over what we just factored out, 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3. The horizontal shift is 4 units to the right. Here's why it was important to factor that 6 out so that we could isolate that 4. In the midline or median of the function is y equals 8, the constant being added at the end. For problem 3, consider the equation y equals 5 times the sine of pi over 4x minus 2 pi plus 4. Now if we factor the pi over 4 out from the quantity inside the sine function, what's left behind is x minus 8. So the amplitude is the absolute value of the coefficient of the sine function, that's 5. The period is 2 pi divided by the constant we factored out inside the sine function. 2 pi over pi over 4 is exactly equal to 8. The horizontal shift is 8 units to the right and the median is y equals 4. Now observe, the horizontal shift of 8 units is exactly equal to the period, so we have shifted one full period, which means you can effectively ignore this shift. If you have a sinusoidal function and you shift it horizontally by one period, you haven't really changed anything. In other words, if we simply ignored that horizontal shift, for every value of x, we would get out exactly the same y value. In problem four, we're given the graph of a function. It's a sinusoidal function. It goes through the points negative nine, zero and one, zero, and we need to find a function that matches the given graph. So we're looking for a times either a sine or a cosine of omega times the quantity x minus phi plus c. The maximum value of this function is y equals three. The minimum is negative three, which means the median is the average, which is zero. So we've solved that c must be zero. The amplitude of the function will be the distance from the median to either the max or the min, which we see is 3. The median is 0, and it goes up to 3 and down to negative 3. That doesn't tell us a is 3. It tells us the absolute value of a is 3. So a is either plus or minus 3. Now the given points, negative 9, 0, and 1, 0, we see mark off one full period. Now the shape starting at the given point, negative 9, 0, going to the point 1, 0, starts at the median value and goes down, which is a negative sine curve. So we want to let a be negative 3 and use a sine function. Now the two points are a distance of 10 apart. They went from x equals negative 9 to x equals 1, and it was one full period, so the period is 10. So 2 pi over omega is 10, which you can solve for omega being pi over 5. So we've solved that the median is c, we want to use a sine function. We want a to be negative 3. We want omega to be pi over 5. Finally, we shifted 9 units left because we're starting one period at x equals minus 9. 
So for shifting nine units left, we're going to let phi equal negative nine. And here we have it y equals negative 3 times the sine of pi over 5 times the quantity x plus 9 all plus 0 is a possible sinusoidal function that matches the given graph. Problem 5, we're given the graph of a function. It's a sinusoidal function. It goes through the points negative 5, negative 2, and 1, negative 2. And what we should do is find a sinusoidal function that matches the given graph. So we want some a times either a sine or a cosine of the quantity omega times x minus phi all plus c. We find a maximum value of y equals 2 and a minimum value of y equals minus 2. The median is the average of the max and min, which is 0. So we've solved that c should be 0. The amplitude is now the distance from the median to either the max or the min. While the median was 0, the max was 2. So the amplitude is 2. This tells us the absolute value of a should be equal to 2. So a is either plus or minus 2. Now the points we were given of negative 5, negative 2, and 1, negative 2 mark off one full period, but this would then be a shape starting at its minimum, which is a negative cosine shape. So we're going to let a be negative 2 and use a cosine function. The two points go from x equals minus 5 to x equal 1. That's a distance of 6 apart. The period is 6. 2 pi over omega is the period, which we now know is 6. So we can solve this for omega. It's pi over 3. And finally, we shifted five units to the left to start our shape at x equals minus five rather than at x equals zero. This tells us phi should be minus five. And here we have a possible solution. y is equal to negative two times the cosine of pi over three times the quantity x plus five all plus zero. I say one possible solution, by the way. C is going to be zero no matter what. The amplitude should be plus or minus two, but the horizontal shift sort of depends on where you want your figure to quote start. We started at x equals minus 5. This starts at the minimum. That's a negative cosine. If we started our shape at x equals negative 2, that would be starting at a maximum. We could have used positive cosine. So still a cosine, but let a equal positive 2. But now we're only shifted two units to the left. If we started at something like negative 3.5, that would be starting at the median going up, that would be positive sign, etc. There are infinitely many possible solutions, we've just found one of them. So given the equation y equals 4 times the tangent of 5x plus 40, we're asked to solve for the period and the horizontal shift. So much like when we had sines or cosines, if you have a function a times the tangent of omega times x minus phi plus c, where omega is presumed to be positive, then the median value is c. Median's a little misleading here because the graph does go off to a vertical asymptote of plus infinity and minus infinity, but it's the height at which the graph has an inflection point. Pi over omega is the period, not 2 pi over omega. Phi is still a horizontal shift to the right, and in many sources, again, this would be distributed out as omega x minus phi, which means if you were to factor out the omega, the horizontal shift would be phi over omega. So going ahead and factoring the 5 out inside the tangent, we have 4 times the tangent of 5 times the quantity x plus 8. So the period is simply pi divided by that constant we factored, 5. And the horizontal shift is 8 units left because we had a plus 8, not a minus 8. In problem 7, let's identify which of these two graphs could be of the function f of x equals 3 times the tangent of pi over 6 times the quantity x plus 2 minus 1. Now the inflection will happen at y equals minus 1 because that's the constant hanging off at the end. The period will be pi divided by the constant pi over 6, which is 6, and that matches both of these functions. However, we want to be shifted 2 units to the left, and this graph is shifted 4 units to the left. We have an inflection at about x equals minus 4. Problem 8, the displacement of a mass suspended by a spring is modeled by the function h of t equals 8 times the sine of 10 pi t, where h is measured in centimeters and t is measured in seconds. The amplitude is simply the multiple of sine or cosine in absolute value, and that's 8. The period is 2 pi divided by whatever the variable inside is being multiplied by, which in this case was 10 pi. 2 pi over 10 pi is simply 1 over 5. What about the frequency? So if we have one of these sinusoidal functions, we know that 2 pi over omega is the period. In other words, the wave goes through one cycle per 2 pi over omega time units. 
So we have one cycle per two pi over omega time units. We already have this measured in cycles per time unit, but if we simplify the fraction, it's omega over two pi. It's the reciprocal of the period, cycles per time unit. So we had a period of one fifth, which means the frequency is five over one or five cycles per time period. Our time period is seconds and cycles per second is Hertz. In problem nine, we have a graph. It shows the displacement from equilibrium for a spring and mass system as it bounces back and forth in an ideal environment, frictionless horizontal surface. So of the five options, which is the best approximation to the period of the mass's motion? So we find one maximum at t equals 75, and the previous maximum is a little bit above 50. I'm not sure exactly what it is by looking, but it's just above 50. So one full period goes from a little bit above 50 to 75. So the period is just a bit less than 25. And of the five options, there's one of them that is just a bit less than 25. That's option B. Problem 10. The motion of a simple harmonic oscillator is given by the equation x equals 17.6 times the cosine of 2.65t plus 0 0.460, where x is measured in centimeters. What is the displacement of the oscillator from equilibrium in centimeters at t equals 5.41 seconds? Now, really, all we have to do is plug and chug. We let t equal 5.41 seconds. We get 17.6 times the cosine of 14.7965. Just make sure your calculator is set to radians mode, and this works out to be about negative 10.78. There we have it, option D. Next up, the outside temperature over a day can be modeled as a sinusoidal function. Suppose you know the temperature is 50 degrees at midnight. The high and low temperatures during the day are 58 and 42 degrees, but you don't know when they happened. Assuming T is the number of hours since midnight, find an equation for the temperature D in terms of T. Now there's actually one bit of information that is not given in the problem but is necessary, but it's a very reasonable bit of information. At midnight, the temperature is not going up, the temperature is going down. The low temperature for a day tends to happen right before the sun comes up, absent other factors, which means it's after midnight. So at midnight, whatever the temperature is, it's getting colder at that point. So our function has a presumed period of 24 hours. This also wasn't given, but I think is a reasonable assumption to put onto this problem. So two pi over omega should be 24. Omega is pi over 12. We know the maximum is 58 and the minimum is 42. The median is the average of those two quantities, which is 50, and the amplitude is therefore eight, the distance from the median to either the maximum or the minimum. So the temperature at midnight happens to be exactly at the median. We were told it was 50 degrees at midnight and that's what we now know the median is. Also, we're assuming it is getting colder. So the temperature at midnight is the median and it is decreasing. That is a negative sign function with no horizontal shift. At midnight, we're at the median going down, negative sign function. So we knew that the amplitude was eight, so we put negative eight times the sine, omega was pi over 12, so the sine of pi over 12t plus the median, that's 50, there it is. Problem 12, the outside temperature over a day can be modeled as a sinusoidal function. Suppose you know the high temperature of 78 degrees occurs at 6 p.m. and the average temperature for the day is 60 degrees. Find the temperature to the nearest degree at 5 a.m. Once again, we'll presume our period is 24 hours, meaning two pi over omega is 24 or omega is pi over 12. The high temperature of 78 and the median temperature of 60 were given. The amplitude is therefore the distance between them, which is 18. Now the high temperature happens at 6 p.m., which is 18 hours after midnight. So at t equals 18, we have our high. If the period is 24 hours, a quarter period is six hours. So this high temperature is exactly three quarter periods. So here is a shape where the high happens exactly three quarter periods into it. That's a negative sine shape with no horizontal shift. So because the high temperature happens exactly three quarters of a period through, we conclude that at t equals zero, we are at the median going down, we have a negative sine shape. We knew our amplitude to be 18, we knew omega to be pi over 12, we were given a median of 60, and having concluded that we need to use a negative sine shape with no horizontal shift, here is our temperature function. At 5 a.m., we simply plug in t equals five, and compute negative 18 times the sine of five pi over 12 plus 60 is just about 43 degrees, which is only one degree higher than the minimum at 6 a.m.
In problem 13, a Ferris wheel is 45 meters in diameter, and you board it from a platform that is 3 meters above the ground. The 6 o'clock position on the Ferris wheel, in other words the bottom, is level with the loading platform. The wheel completes one full revolution in two minutes. The function h equals f of t gives your height in meters above the ground t minutes after the wheel begins to turn. So first, what's the amplitude? So how far from the median height will you get? Well, if you're going around a wheel, the distance from the median you will achieve will be the radius of the wheel, which was 45. Next, what's the median? The bottom of the wheel is at the platform, which is at a height of three. So the middle is 45 meters higher, one radius or 48 meters. Next, what's the period? We were simply told one full revolution in two minutes. So that's the period. How far off the ground are you after one minute? So one minute is half a period. Assuming you start at the loading platform or at the bottom, half a rotation will put us exactly at the top. The median was 48, the amplitude is 45, so the maximum is the sum, 93 meters. And finally, problem 14. A Ferris wheel is 45 meters in diameter and boarded from a platform that is 4 meters above the ground. The 6 o'clock position, in other words the bottom, on the Ferris wheel is level with the loading platform. The wheel completes one revolution every 6 minutes. The function h equals f of t gives the height in meters above the ground t minutes after the wheel begins to turn. Write an equation for f of t. The amplitude is how far from the median you travel, that's the radius of the wheel, 45 meters. The minimum height is the platform where you load, that's 4 meters. So the median will be 1 radius higher, or 49 meters. The period was 6 minutes, so 2 pi over omega should be 6, or omega is pi over 3. And we start at the bottom. The only trigonometric shape between positive sine, negative sine, positive cosine, and negative cosine, the one that starts at the minimum is the negative cosine shape with no horizontal shift. So we simply use negative 45 was our amplitude times the cosine of pi over 3t with no horizontal shift plus our median of 49.